Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's discussion where we are going to be diving into the nitty gritty regarding research with a matched IMG and plastic surgery, Malki Assad. So thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, maybe uh, where you came from and when you came to the United States and some of the experiences you had as you got to the U.S.? Yeah, definitely. So my name is Malki Assad. I'm originally from Syria. I grew up in Aleppo and I went to medical school there. After I finished my medical school, uh, I started research at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. And this is where I got my first research experience. I stayed there for almost a year. And then I moved to Houston to MD Anderson, where I did two years of research uh, in reconstructive microsurgery. During the second year of my research at MD Anderson, I applied to the match and I matched into plastic surgery at the University of Pittsburgh, where I'm currently a resident. Congratulations. I bet that feels amazing. All the hard work and time you put into you know, learning about this field uh, paid off. So congrats. Thank you. And it feels different now because the, the way I used to introduce myself during the interviews is I'm currently a researcher at MD Anderson. Now I have to change it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. So can you tell us a little bit more about how you got that first research experience and what you were looking for when you were looking for programs and how you, you actually made the connection to get this opportunity? Yeah, definitely. So there are different ways to find a research position when you're looking for one. And I discussed the details of that in a video I posted recently about how to find research positions in the US. And in summary, there are three main ways to find research positions. The first one is to look on websites if there is an opening, because sometimes labs or, or departments post that they need a research fellow or a research trainee in that specific area of expertise, they put the requirements and you can check these websites for you to, to join a research team. The other one is connections. So if you know somebody who uh, left the research position and you can just join the, the same lab instead of that person or your father or your mother or like some uh, family relative know a friend in the US who can hook you up with, a, with, a, with someone who can you do research with. So that's the second way, connections. And the third way is emails. And I find that this is the way that most people use because the difference between a research and the match is that there is one time where you can apply to the match, special, uh, one centralized website and, and process. You match at a certain time, people leave at a certain time. However, in research is different because there's no such a thing. So a position might open up tomorrow, another position might be open, but nobody's filling it. And there is no way for you to know about these positions. So right. that's why most people take the third approach, which is emailing people who they are interested in working with. And I want to stress this very, very much because I got yesterday, for example, dear doctor, and they are interested in working with you and research. And they, don't, they didn't even look that I'm a resident and I don't have a research lab. So this is very annoying for doctors to receive such emails because they know that you just sent this same email to everyone. Like they didn't mm -hmm. even put my name. They just put dear doctor. They didn't put, take the effort to individualize that email to my name. So don't do that. This is the mistake that I see with the third approach that Definitely. I sent a hundred emails and nobody responded to me. Well, of course nobody's going to respond <laughs> to me like that. So if you send email, you have first to convince the person that you're emailing why you're choosing them why why should they take you do you read about did you read about their expertise what they do why are you interested in working with them if for example they do uh, uh, let's say lymphedema research and you're interested in heart failure there's no point of you joining their research because at the end of the day you want your research to help you in your residency process or in your match and get the experience that if you want to become a researcher afterward you would be experienced in that field so if you want to do cardiology, it's not going to make sense to do research in colon cancer, for example. So that's why finding the person, which is time consuming, it takes time. But people don't want to spend time and look for the person that they want to spend a year with for free. So I definitely recommend doing the research, finding the person that fits your interest, and then emailing them with a very individualized email that can help you get that position. And once you got that position, did it meet your expectations? Were you able to really take advantage of the experience and the connections to move forward with your journey towards a match? So when I started my research, I can tell you I had one case report that I wrote from my, uh, one of my electives. And okay. Mayo, I had 33. So it definitely met my expectations and I got amazing experience from there. 
However, the position at me was unpaid. So that's why I needed to find a paid position. And I started looking midway during my, uh, my research training position at Mayo for a paid position. And I ended up at the uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston. I was extremely lucky to get that position and work with phenomenal people, phenomenal group of microsurgeons. And uh, it definitely helped because without the experience I built and the publications I had from my prior experience, I wouldn't have got the, the paid position at MD Anderson. Was the position at MD Anderson due to connections or were you just emailing, like you said, people to try to get your foot in the door? Were you able to um, get that position through some sort of network that you had going? So it was emailing actually. It was emailing, but then the chair of that position, the, the one that at MD Anderson, knew the, the faculty at Mayo and the, he called him after I sent the email. So it's kind of a comb combination of both, but it started with an email. Amazing. And so what do you see as the culmination of all this experience that you got in research? So it definitely helped me to get that experience, which I transferred to other people doing my research course. It definitely was a factor in me matching into plastic surgery, a huge factor actually got me the exposure to the field because I didn't know much about the reconstructive aspect, the complicated free flaps that they do here before coming and doing that research. It uh, gave me the exposure to people that I wouldn't have worked with if I didn't do the research. So it was extremely, extremely helpful. And I tell people, if I went back in, my, in time and you tell me, would you rather match directly into plastic surgery or do these two years of research and then match? Now I would definitely choose the two years of research, even though it would cost me two years. If you asked me three years ago, I was like, definitely, I want to match directly. I don't want to spend <laughs> that time. But now looking at these experiences that you would gain, it, it, it's definitely worth it. Can you tell us a little bit more about the research course that you mentioned? So yeah, definitely. I've seen so many courses and things online that would teach you how to do research. But actually, when I, I watched them, I, I ended up, after watching the, the course, I learned something but it's not something I can apply to my publications and my research. It was very theoretical. It doesn't help you as a researcher like me, medical student or a resident to actually get the publication. So that was the whole purpose of this course to give people a practical advice on how they can do the research. From my experience, I'm not a, a PhD student. I'm not a, like someone who did masters of science or master of public health. I'm just someone who published hundred papers during this time period from and these experience I gained with 100 publications, 80 presentations, I wanted to summarize it to people and give it back to the students so they can work on it. So the course starts from the basics and it's for beginners. It's not for somebody who's experienced in research. Somebody who had no idea about research can definitely use it. Starts from the literature review, goes to how to build the variable list, the data, how to write the manuscript, how to respond to reviewers with all examples. It's full of uh, articles from the literature with links, exercises, quizzes, so people can practice and learn from it. However, the research course did not cover the stat and I made a specific course about statistical analysis because it's extensive. It's over 10 hours of videos for, I use two programs, SPSS and JMP. So I show you how to import your data, how to do descriptive analysis, median, mean, percentages, how to do ANOVA, chi-square, regression analysis, survival analysis. So if you wanna know how to analyze your data, use examples from the literature. I, I provide you data so you can do your own analysis and compare it to the ones we do. This is definitely going to be extremely helpful to you. So both the research and the stat course will give you all the experience you need to start your research position or do research in medical school. Amazing. And where can they find that course? So I can leave the link in the description of this video so people can sign up. And if they have any questions, they can feel free to reach out to me through the website or my social media, Malki Assad on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Perfect. And do you have any final thoughts about research in general or for IMGs who are interested in starting research? Yeah, definitely. So research is an important part in your application. I highly recommend for those who are interested in research to do some time of research either in their home country or US. Definitely US would be more helpful for your application, but it's not a must for every specialty. So you don't have to do it if you're not interested in it and you're applying for not as competitive specialties, but for highly competitive specialties is kind of a must because this is the way how you would interact with people and people get to know you. So definitely follow the things that you're passionate about. I was productive because I was in a very nice environment. People were supportive and I was doing the things I wanted to do. I like to do reconstructive microsurgery and 
I was doing research in that. That what kept me working till midnight, early in the morning, weekends. So find your passion because that's going to be the fire that will push you ahead.